Oh my goodness, they've changed things again. The grass looks like it used to. I think a lot of you guys are going to be very excited about that because many of us were having a hard time with the grass being a little thicker. I actually got used to it. So once again, uh, we've got some, uh, some wonderful changes to adapt to here on Niche, the snowy biome version. And hello everyone and welcome back to the Yukir tribe. We are currently looking over the identical twins that we had last time, little Zako and Zan who are the children of Zakai, if I remember correctly. I have just returned myself. Yep, there's Zakai. Oh, I'm so glad he got to have at least at least one little litter. And he had identical twins of all things. That is just so precious to me that we were able to celebrate Zakai's awesome leadership and his life with having identical twins, our first identical twins ever. So that's going to be really wonderful. I hope that Zana and Zako will be able to live up to their father's legacy. But yes, welcome back to the Yukir tribe, guys. I am back myself from having just gone on a really awesome camping trip. So it has been a little while since I have looked over all of our wonderful, wonderful creatures. And now is the time when I must reacquaint myself with all of the ones who are running around on the island and also catch up with many of your guys' very concerned comments, such as the fact that somebody is bleeding! Somebody has been wounded! I think, was it Snowflake? Or, no, it was Katamati. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll have Snowflake come on over to him. And we will give him a little lick to try to heal him. Because I know a lot of you guys were really upset that Katamati was bleeding. So I will try to cure him, or heal him, I should say, by giving him a good little lick. And thus, once again, proving that Snowflake's very unique life here on the edges of the tribe, kind of in her own little lost corner of the island world, definitely has served a lot of wonderful purposes, including having little Anan, who is just the most most beautiful little creature. I love that she has both the spiky body and the big cracker jaws. So hopefully she'll be able to really, really have a unique future uh, ahead. She does, after all, carry the D and C immunity genes. She does have the risk of blind eyes being passed on, but for the most part, she's a pretty healthy little creature. So we'll kind of review her in just a little bit. But our big project, as you guys know, is actually to move the Yukir tribe on to the next island. And that is going to be picking five creatures to take with us so that we can search out the other genes that are hidden in the ice. And the genes that were hidden in the ice on this snowy island were actually the armored body genetics. And you can see Maddox here, who is our very first armored bodied creature. And he is just looking so amazing. And he is working on having some children with Korra at the moment. So Cora is not sick. A lot of you guys were saying that she was sick. Thankfully, fingers crossed, she is not. She also is fully armored body in both uh, in both her gene slots. So that means she should definitely have a child with armored body if she continues having children with Maddox, which they are totally going to be doing because I need as many armored body children as possible. We are going to be picking all of the armored bodied children. We want to make sure that gene goes with us to the next island after all. That's the whole point of coming to collect it from this land which we still need to name. I haven't really had a name to get too attached to for this island, but I am definitely attached to this island. It's actually really weird to see it with the different grass now that everything has changed. And I know somewhere over here is that balance bear just wandering around. Can we smell him? Yeah, look, there he is. He's right there. So I know that he's lurking in the shadows, but I'm so excited that we finally, finally, finally have some wonderful armored bodied creatures. Cause with that armored body, I don't know anything. Maybe the apes, maybe, that could attack us. Suddenly, we're just invincible. And I think that is amazing. So we're gonna have some more kids for sure. Let's see, so let's start there, actually. I'm gonna move Cora down here. I'm going to have her breed, and I'm gonna have her repair the nest so that she can just go ahead, have her baby right away. I gotta keep an eye out for the birds to make sure nobody eats little baby Glacier, who's feeling pretty happy. He's warmed up by being near his pack and possibly being near this little hot spring. We also have Tata reborn once again with recessive armored body and he does have g and c immunity we do want to definitely try to take a whole bunch of different immunity genes to the next island but that's going to be very tricky because we've had to do a lot of interbreeding in order to get the doubled armored bodied uh creatures that we're going for so hopefully we'll be able to make that work another possible way we could make it work is the fact that little Aegeus and our Aralala here do you have some different genes? I think Yeah, really honestly they 
do share the immunity D gene, but they may possibly have a child with Frisk who has H or D, and that would be very useful. Or with Darren, who would possibly add in that D. Darren really isn't like the highest up there in priority to breed with because, you know, the girls are doubled up G. There's no point in having them breed with him. And Sedel here, I think, is just our wandering creature. If I remember right, she is busy gathering up fish. And as long as she can continue to fish or forage for her food, we're going to keep her as a member of our tribe. But we have a whole bunch of roaming tribe members who are wandering this icy island now. So let's see. What were we working on over here? I think that I'm going to have Sedel. Can she do anything? Are there any bunnies? Oh, what's this? Yeah, that's just the balance bear in the distance. There are some bunnies over here. How quickly can... Sedel, what have you done? And I think that they, um, they just updated today. So just little tweaks, I think, to the latest update. And I think that the camera work has changed again. So if I misname the creatures, help me to remember their correct names again, guys. All right. So she does have okay movement and really good attack. So I think I might actually move her over here. And that attack is for good for fishing. No, her, just her fishing is good for fishing. So that koi fish is going to get away from us. But we can we can try to chase down some of the bunnies. I think that's something we could definitely make work. And I do want to keep an eye out for birds, but there's no birds right now. So I think Snowflake would be okay moving towards Katama, uh, Katamati in order to be able to heal him and give him a good lick. All right, and then let's move down here. We're gathering up food. The identical twins are so precious. I'm so excited to have them. Not really sure what we're going to do with them because we are only moving the armored bodied children over there, but I think they actually have armored bodied recessive. So they do have G immunity though, which we already have. So we'll have to think about that, but they can come down and we'll switch the twins up a little bit so they can help their mother to collect up some of the food. They can learn how to gather up nuts from their mother, Lassie, who is one of my favorite creatures. There we go. And yeah, apologies if I seem a little bit distracted. It's just settling in after being away for a week on my fun little camping trip. And then Lila's going to help out with all of these clams. I think we do. Yeah, look at all those clams. I think it's funny how you can hear clams. What a unique thing to be able to do with a clam. You think you'd be able to see a clam, but no, we hear clams. All right. And then Andrea was also going to help out with the clams. So let's give it a good listen. Um, oh, we can't get that clam for some reason. Anthea, you should be able to get that clam. Oh, was it because she can't swim underwater? Gosh darn. So I unfortunately ended up hurting her by accident. So what am I going to do with Andrea to make sure that she can bring in some food? Maybe I'll have her go this direction. So we might send her over there. Halvor, um, can you hear any clams? Halvor is getting quite old. He, he did a good job. He had his children. He took good care of them. So I think we can just let him kind of be the old grandpa who roams up along the side of the beach for a minute. And then over here, we have Avar, as usual, keeping a good eye on Winty. Uh, since Winty is blind and he has been taking care of Winty for a long time now, just kind of helping her to be able to see everything. There isn't really a lot for them to gather at the moment. Oh, there's some food though. Oh, Avar, you can get it. Yes! All right. And Anara can come on up. I think her mother just passed away. That's so sad. Oh, and I had a whole nest over here. I always forget about that nest because of the way we turned. I didn't need to use those nesting materials. Fully. Oh, well. We'll fix that in the future. And then over here, Harvey is going to be taking care of his daughter, Anara. And I think Anara... Yeah, she does not have... Oh, but she has that immunity caging. That's why we were bringing her over here. <gasps> Anara, I might have to like emergency breed you against Glacier or actually Maddox. You know what, Maddox? You step over here, buddy. And as soon as Anara is old enough, I think we may breed Anara and Maddox on the fingers crossed hope of having a armored bodied creature because that immunity caging is very rare. And if you guys remember, we sacrificed a lot to be able to bring it to the island. So, hmm. All right. We'll have them breed. And I think I'm going to come over. Come back here. Crab it. I'm going to get you. And we'll have uh, Karodu and Harvey work on attacking this little crabbit. All right, let's make sure. Yeah, we're trying to get all of the armored bodied babies we have to have some ram horns and antlers in order to add a little bit of attack to them. Winty is going to just kind of stay by her tree. Let's see, and what do we have going on over here? Rodin, I think, was just gathering up material and kind of wandering around. Um, same here, so we're going to do this. Rara was waiting here to be able to watch out for any rabbits. 
And then, Rasia, who did you have this? <gasps> Rasia, you just added a child with immunity G and C. Nice. Rasisi. Wonderful. So at least that adds another possible female that we could take. Rasia, who did you have that baby with? I don't remember. All right. Rasisi, where are you? There you are. Your father is Maddox. Maddox has been having kids with some of the other creatures, and it's actually paying off. Oh my gosh. Rasisi, welcome to the world, little one. She has got the medium tail, antlers, cracker jaw, armored body, which is kind of the entire, entire genetic embodiment that we are really going for. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, yay. All right, Rasisi, I think I'm going to scooch her over. She's going to keep guard over her baby for the moment. But we may breed Maddox up with a few other creatures now, especially if we can get in some of the, like, immunity A and K. Those are really ideal things to do. So even if we don't have all of the creatures going, most of the creatures, like at least three out of the five that we choose to send onward so that they can explore the icy lands that their ancestors have talked about for so long. Little Glacier is definitely probably going to go, especially because he can carry on the legacy of Maddox. And Maddox is super awesome since he's the very first creature we realized was so powerful against that balance bear. It tried so hard to chew on him when he was a child and he just denied it the pleasure, which a lot of you guys were so tickled by. So little Maddox, who's not so little anymore, uh, will definitely have his legacy live on in his children that we will send. But which children to send across the icy island? That's kind of the question. Hmm. So we'll just keep breeding a few of them up and see what the results are. And then this Tata, who does not have a like armored body active, he has G and C immunity. I think that's what his. Nope, we have E here, but Rasisi has G and C. I think this little Tata, I'll send, I'll keep sending up this way so we can try to look for some of the rabbits because we are getting a little bit tight on food and everybody has been very adamant that we definitely want to make sure we go with tons of food. Oh, look at that. Cook here. Stop stealing all those berries. I need those. At least they can't eat the nuts. That would really suck. All right. And then down here, we have little Kinsa and she's been doing a good job looking around for clams for the most part. I don't think she's gonna find any here, but she can help out with harvesting from this tree, I suppose. Yeah, and the wanderers are moving around. The ones that we released are moving around eating all those berries. Uh, like little Kukier here. He's actually really beautiful to see from all the different angles. That's real fun. But I'm okay with that because mostly what we eat tend to be the nuts anyway, the nuts and the rabbits. So as long as they don't steal my rabbits, then we can, we can put up with it. All right, so let's go ahead and see what Maddox and Cora's next child will be. Our powerful couple here having armored bodied children who will never have to worry about the fierce bite of the balance bear. And another little boy. No, Ronuku! How could you, Ronuku? Oh no! That wasn't supposed to happen. That was really not supposed to happen. Didn't I have this issue already? Is that what, Agus, are you, are you one of the children? Uh, Maddox, just how many kids do you have? Agus! Oh my gosh, that is the problem. What have I done? Okay, we've got to get everybody away from that baby. Unfortunately, the illnesses have, have reappeared. So this is going to be a little interesting. Let's gather up this food. Make sure we're next to all of our children because we have that uh, big old, big old eagle flying overhead. All right, I need to get the... Okay, going to snag that meat. You back off. You back off. I'm watching you trying to get to my babies. So it seems like Rasisi is actually one of the best. So Rasisi and Glacier are definitely going to be a couple of the ones that we send over. There's a risk that they could have unhealthy children, but they both have armored body. We have little Rokunu. Maddox, you need to stop having children who are so dangerous to keep near us. Um, but I think that Ari, Lala, and Aegis, if we can keep them alive long enough, will end up mostly having children with Fisk. And the problem is he doesn't really have armored body though. So, hmm. So actually, Ronuku, <gasps> Ronuku would have healthy children with these two. So he just needs to live long enough to have children with them. And then we would be able to get healthy armored bodied babies. And that's really the only thing that we're going for right now. All right, Daryl, that means that I'm going to scooch you over here. Oh, if only we could get that bunny. Come on, bunny. Come back to me. I need the bunnies. Gosh darn it. All right. And then come on bunny. All right So we're gonna gather up some of those bunnies for the bunny meat 
and then I'm going to have Snowflake come over and heal up uh, Katamati. And they've actually got a little bit of a romance going on, but the fact of the matter is that it is oh so hard. Uh, shoo, 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 cook here. It is oh so hard to keep everybody fed and alive on the island. Um, oh, there was a bunny. Oh, can I have Kinta Kien come help us out with the bunny? Dang it, and the bunny is going to get away. But it is very hard to keep everybody fed on the island, so I'm not going to have any more babies except for the ones that we are definitely working on, like, special armored bodied skills on. All right, we're going to have little Zana come down and help out. Let's go ahead and destroy this nest to gather up some nesting materials. Evergreen, who is really amazing and actually has big body. Oh, maybe I'll try breeding her. Immunity G and K. I need that immunity K for sure. That would be very, very useful to have. All right, Lassie is going to gather up these nuts. There we go. She's going to be teaching her daughters how to work on gathering those up. Um, let's see. And also scoot her over here so she can keep an eye on this bunny burrow and gather up from these grasses. And actually, I'm going to move Ari over here to get bitten by this leech. And we're going to actually harvest the leech up just like that without having to even sacrifice a single, a single bit of Ari's health there. So that was really interesting. Let's see. And then we're going to start fighting. The boys are going... Oh! Well, I was going to say the boys are going to have this epic battle with the Krabbit, but he was over pretty quick. All right, we're going to stay away from that leech until I have a little bit more food. All right, then we're going to gather up. Lyle is going to gather up that clam. And we have little old man Halvor. I'm just going to let him kind of get comfy right on the edge of the water here. And let the tide sort of carry him away when the time comes very soon. Ah, the bones bear! The bones bear is saying hi to Rodin. We're going to let Rodin keep moving. And we're going to keep an eye on little baby Rasisi. So her mom is going to try really hard to make sure that she stays safe. So Rasia is going to watch over little Rasisi. Rara is... I'm going to send Rara over, actually. Oh, yes. And we're going to start gathering up nesting material. Because I have a feeling we're going to need it on the next island as well. So we're going to do a lot of jumping around. Oh, if only I could catch all those bunnies. A lot of jumping around. And I think... That I'm gonna see. Can I move the little baby? If I do, he might get swiped by that bird. Little Glacier. Oh, Glacier, I've got to get you out of the way, away from your sick brother, though. So we're gonna have Mama come over here. Cora is gonna step to the side. I wonder if I should stop breeding Cora and Maddox because they are having unhealthy children. Um, I have to wait for Anara to grow up a little bit older before they're able to mate and give me some hopefully healthy children with immunity K or A to send over. So I think, yeah, I think if we send at least two or three creatures who are in both slots armored body, and then the rest of the creatures we pick at least have one slot armored body, then fingers crossed we should be able to keep that rare gene that you cannot put into the mutation menu alive and well within the tribe and send the rest of our tribe onward to continue the exploration to the icy islands and finding, um, finding what they're going to need in order to start having a lot of really healthy children of their own. I forgot about this nest! I 100% forgot about it! Good job! Good job, Fisk! You have earned your own little nest with your own little children. So yeah, I, I think that's what we'll do. Three of the slots that we're going to put down are going to be healthy, healthy children who are armored body in both slots, both recessive and dominant. And then we are going to be sending at, like two children who have more variable genetics, so the immunity genes basically, like the K's, the D's, the H's, the things we need to get into the family and keep with us. Um, but they will be okay, we'll just say that they have to have at least one gene with the armored body and that should do it. All right, so that should do it. And then Andrea, can I have you, can you do any digging? It'd be really useful to have Digger Paw, actually. Uh, but, oh, oh, dang it. Well, that solves my problem with what to do about the baby. I knew that was a risk, but I had to take it because he was sick. Oh, we have to protect Glacier. Glacier and Rasisi have now become like the main ones that we definitely want to keep an eye on in this tribe. Oh, I'm so sad about that. K and E and me and D. Oh, why? Why? Cora, I'm so sorry so many of your children have ended up so unhealthy. Uh, we can try again. We'll have to try again. Oh gosh. I feel so bad. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna have to have Cora 
Korra, try again with Maddox, even though their child was just taken from the skies. Dang it. I would be more upset about that, but that was an unhealthy baby. And that does settle the question of what happens with armored-bodied children uh, ending up ending up bird food. That it does, it, The birds are basically the only things that armored-bodied babies have to fear. <sighs> Alright, well at least I know that now. Okay, let's see. We had a couple creatures die. Old age there. And then, I think... Oh yeah, that was old age over here too. All right, so I think what we're gonna work on, sorry if I seem so distracted, it's just organizing the genetics again. Rasisi, you stay alive, please. I think she's old enough to be on her own now. And then, are we of age with Anara? We are not of age with her just yet, so I'm gonna have her come over and maybe collect up some berries. However, these girls, Aralala and Aegis have finally hit the age to be able to have children of their own. And we have Glacier over here who is our wonderful, healthy child. He's very warm. In fact, he's always warm, I'm noticing. Glacier always has the little, like, warmed up trait. I think it's because he is really well beloved by his parents. I mean, look at him. He looks like they, they've pinned all their hopes on him. He is the first child that Maddox and Cora have had together that is actually pretty healthy. And they can see him, envision him. They have raised him in the, the like mountains, looking down on the path that they hope he will one day take to spread their tribe's adventures to another land. So I think that they've definitely pinned a lot of hopes on him. And little Rasisi will definitely be able to have some of those hopes uh, shared. So she's going to probably come over and be Glacier's mate. And we'll also have to send off one or two more armored bodied children. But I definitely need to start focusing on what genes to send. K and A immunity genes are very important. Getting in that D or that H would be very important. So, hmm. I think, you know what? I think that we're good having at least two creatures with 100% armored body. And I'm going to work on varying up the genetics. But guys, I think next time we're going to do it. Everybody I was planning on breeding to be able to do that has finally reached age. We're just going to make sure that Glacier can make it unlike his poor younger brother. That was a little frustrating, but I don't know what else to do with a very sick creature other than get them out of the nest before they infect my armored bodied populace. And we are going to see if Rusisi, Glacier, and whichever children we're about to have will be strong enough and healthy enough and varied in their immunity genes enough to send down to this snowy path and on to the next island so that we can start adding in more of the very, very interesting genes into the Yukio tribe. So thank you guys for letting me just adjust to being back home and watching over our tribe. Uh, and I'm really excited to see where things go because my goal for tomorrow is going to be having as many babies as we can so we can leave ASAP and just really set out on the adventure. And you know what? Just as a little final side note, I definitely think uh, Snowflake and Katami, uh, Kat yeah, Katamiti, I think they've got a little bit of a romance going on, and I think that's really sweet, especially because of little Anon being raised, being raised by them on this side of the island, which has so much history of the origins of where our creatures came from. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye. <laughs>